All right, hello and welcome. My name is Andrew Otis, and um, I'm here to present what I think is one of the most remarkable newspapers of the 18th century. It's known as Hickey's Bengal Gazette, and it was named after its founder, James Augustus Hickey. It was printed in your city of Calcutta for two short years from 1780 to 1782, during a time when the British were beginning to conquer India. So let me take you through what happened with the newspaper and give you a brief introduction of the work I did to discover this story. So I'm an author, author of a book on the topic and discovering the beginnings of India's journalism history is a journey that took me from the United States, here's the Morgan Library in New York, to India, beautiful archives in Germany, many archives in England, and back to India many times. In total, five years of research and writing on this topic, including a lot of very sweaty train rides, and many archives in India. Now, this is the back room of the Madras University Library Archive. I was invited by a professor at the university, and what I want you to focus on here is not these stacks of books that you see, but these bound volumes of newspapers here. These are invaluable newspapers from the 19th century, and they're quite literally rotting in the archives. So this is the more extreme example, but a lot of what I dealt with when I tried to discover what happened with India's early newspaper history, I had to deal with archives such as this one. I also had the opportunity to visit many local district records. This is in Tentulia in Bengal, Western Bengal, near the Bangladeshi border. So there's some misperceptions that I want to correct before continuing. And the first is that there's no surviving image of James Augustus Hickey. And the closest thing we have is his signature here. Hickey's Bengal Gazette was founded in Calcutta in 1780 and the capital of British Bengal. It was quickly becoming one of the most important cities for international trade in Asia. It was the center of the British Empire in India. And specifically, Hickey's Bengal Gazette was founded in Radha Bazaar in the center of the city. So these are the very first pages of India's first newspaper, January 28, 9th, 1780. Why is this special? Well, first, this revolutionized how information was received and transmitted. Previously, everything had to be handwritten, and now it's printed. What do you notice? Well, first, there are no illustrations and, of course, no photographs. Technology for that comes much later in the next century. And second, you'll notice there are generally no advertisements on the front page. This might come as a surprise if you read the Times of India every day. You also might notice that there are a few headlines. News back then was more like letters to the editor and with news and opinion all mixed together. Finally, you might notice that the title of the newspaper is actually Hickey's Bengal Gazette or the Calcutta General Advertiser. So it's a gazette of information and also a place where things can be advertised. You might also notice something unusual with the letter F here. This is actually not an F, it's an S. You can tell because it has a nub only on one side. It's actually called a labial S or a, a long S and it fell out of fashion later in the 18th century. Here's an example of an article on the front pages. It's about war in America coming by letter via Aleppo in Syria. The news has to travel almost half a year to go halfway across, uh, almost a year to go halfway across the world. Here's news more local to India about a storm off the coast. And here are the third and fourth pages of Hickey's Gazette. You'll see there's more commentary here and practical information, such as this notification of ships coming and going from the port of Calcutta. There's also advertisements on the third and fourth pages, such as this by the owner of Calcutta's library from exceedingly good 
claret. Claret is a type of wine. There's even some poetry, such as this poem on opinion, a poem on joy and happiness. Uh, so Hickey, when he's printing this newspaper, he has a staff assistant. The paper was printed once a week and it cost one rupee. That's about the same as three kilos of rice. It was four pages and about 22 by 36 centimeters. Circulation was about 400 copies per week, although it was often read in groups in coffee houses, as was common for the time. Hickey himself was an Irishman, and for the first 40, 40 years in India, in fact, all newspapers were run and operated by Europeans with some Indian assistance. It was only later where um, Indian owned newspapers came to the fore. So the editor of the newspaper, Hickey, he had been orphaned when young, and had been apprenticed as a printer, uh, and he practiced surgery and did a number of different jobs, jobs before moving to India. Looking for a new career, he sailed to India in 1772, following this path. It was a journey that took nine months. Upon landing in Calcutta, Hickey started a business. However, the business failed when his ship was damaged in a storm. And by October 1776, he was in jail for debt. At this time in history, debtors have to pay for their own food, water, and rent in jail or else starve. So he needs the way to make money. How does he do it? He borrows money from a friend and he makes types and he hires carpenters to smuggle a printing press inside of the jail cell. And by 1777, he had actually founded the first printing press in Calcutta, all while from within jail. Now, there's some other printing presses that actually have been founded but um, in Bengal, but not in the Calcutta proper itself. This is an example of some of the very early printing in India. It might be the earliest surviving printed document from North India, and it's an advertisement for Chinese goods. And it only survives because someone found it stitched into the binding of another document. And it was found in the School of Oriental and African Studies in London. And I actually came across this myself. All right, so let me take you through the newspaper for a little bit. While um, much of writing in Hickey's Gazette was probably written by men, there were a few exceptions. And this is an article by an Anglo-Indian woman known as Old Nell. It's three columns, one, two, three, above the fold. That's the most important place for newspaper. So what does Old Nell say? Well, she says, she explains that she's an Anglo-Indian and a green grocer, which means she sells groceries and vegetables. She's also the daughter of an Irish man and an Indian woman. She writes, though my skin is not as, as white as your fine ladies, it is as plump and as sleek as the best of them. She writes, you must know, Mr. Hickey, my husband is a gardener. I am therefore up at daybreak, plucking my roots and washing them for market. From whence I return, generally by nine, but sometimes sooner, I eat a hearty breakfast, not of slip slop tea, but of good congee, after which I attend to the domestic affairs of our little cottage, whilst my husband is plowing and working in the grounds. Our dinner is generally made of wholesome curries or the poultry of our yard, and congee again serves us for supper. Thus we enjoy sound and perfect health. So she's talking about her life and Hickey gives her a forum to do so. I'll share with you one more article. This is about a fire in Calcutta and, and fires used to be a major problem in, in the city, mostly because uh, buildings, the roofs were made out of thatch and jute. So this article writes, it's actually more of an opinion. This article writes to the benevolent and powerful, be it known that 15,000 inhabitants are since the late fires in extreme distress. The infants wailing in their mother's bosoms increase the calamity beyond the power of language to describe. Think upon this scene, ye patrons of the unfortunate. Exert your influence, 
clothe their nakedness and give them habitations. So Hickey is using his newspaper as a, a way to bring public awareness to important events. So why is Hickey's Bengal was that interesting? Well, one of the things Hickey wrote about was an accusation against Governor General Warren Hastings and his wife Marion of corruption. Specifically, he accused one of Hastings' aides of soliciting a bribe uh, to protect his paper. So this is 1780. Hickey accuses Warren Hastings as aide of soliciting a bribe. And he writes, what man can be safe where such schemes are practiced? In response, Hastings forbids Hickey from mailing his newspaper at all. And he authorizes the search and seizure of Hickey's newspaper. Quote, the newspaper was found to, quote, disturb the peace of the settlement and is no longer permitted to be circulated. From this point onwards, Hickey began sporting a new slogan on the newspaper. The slogan is a weekly political and commercial paper open to all parties, but influenced by none. Um, this might not seem like much, you know, it's not like a really obviously political slogan, but there's more to it. So bear with me for a second. One day I was visiting a museum in Washington, DC. And this museum is called the Newsam. It's all about news. They have drawers and drawers of old newspapers from 200, 300 years ago, all across the world, but mostly from the US. I just happened to pull one of these drawers out and I saw the same slogan, open to all parties, but influenced by none. This is in the Massachusetts um, Spy, which is a newspaper based on the American state of Massachusetts. And I saw the same slogan again on many pro-independence, pro-American independence newspapers. Virginia Gazette opened all parties, but influenced by none. So if you're familiar with American politics, this is quite remarkable. And you'll notice that Hickey appears to have copied the slogan from the Americans open all parties, influenced by none. 1771 in America, 1781 in India. This was an anti-British empire slogan run by American patriots who wanted independence from Britain. And I'm sure by using the slogan in India, its meaning would not have been lost on East India Company leadership. So Hickey also published some other articles and he gets more and more radical as he accuses Warren Hastings of more corruption. This one is addressed to the quote, inhabitants of Bengal, countrymen and friends. It's a bit ambiguous, you know, does he mean Europeans only or does he mean Indians as well? And who does he mean by countrymen and friends? So anyways, he writes, the main purpose of government is that government shall consult the welfare of the people. And when, that, and the people shall obey government on that condition. And when that condition is neglected or violated, the people no longer are bound to obey. There you have it. All right. There's one article that really got Warren Hastings' attention. In it, Hickey accused Warren Hastings of launching numbers of wars to conquer the Indian subcontinent. And Hickey writes, it is reported that the great Mughal is seized with a fit of despondency and political despair, and that the faculty, meaning doctors, are of opinion his, quote, perennial spring is out of order. And this is sort of the 18th century way of saying um, that Hastings doesn't have manhood. He literally cannot run this. He's in incompetent. Um, as you can imagine, this didn't go well. Hickey was sued for libel and was found guilty after a dramatic trial. And one of the reasons Hickey, uh, the newspaper shut down so easily actually, um, was Hastings had bribed some of the judges of the Supreme Court. This is the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, uh, Elijah Impey. This is Judge Robert Chambers. Uh, Chambers had also been bribed uh, about five lakh rupee. And so how do I know about these bribes? Well, there was a third member of the court, a man named John Hyde, and he was actually an honest judge. 
And Hyde also kept notebooks written in secret code about his fellow judges accepting bribes. So when I was living in Calcutta, I came across these notebooks and I found this code. And you can actually see these for yourself. Um, they've been published online. Um, and they're also at the Victoria Memorial in your city. So uh, if you can, I really encourage you to get, go down and take a look. So I found out that no one had written about this code before. And I was like, okay, this is important. It's all surrounding the trials involving Hickey. What's going on? So I found a professor in New Jersey and the United States, and she's an expert in cryptology. And she was able to decipher what Hyde was writing. And so here Hyde writes, before we went into court today, Sir Elijah Impey told me at my house that he had accepted an appointment from Warren Hastings, i.e. he had accepted a bribe. It's pretty cool stuff for, for deciphering ancient code, we're trying to figure out what happens with India's first newspaper and uh, some of the day-to-day -day research that I do. So I spent many months at the National Library in Alipur uh, reading through microfilm of these notebooks. There's about 20,000 pages. It's pretty tough work. And I also spent many months at the High Court of Calcutta and took months to gain access to the archives there. And when I was finally approved, I had to get permission for each individual document. Um, and there's no catalog, so it's a very difficult place to do research. But while I was in the High Court of Calcutta, I came across a copy of Hickey's Bengal Gazette that did not exist, um, I thought at that time, did not exist anywhere else in the world. Hickey's Bengal Gazette, extraordinary. And this was an edition of his newspaper printed the day before he, Hickey was to go to trial for libel. So Hickey remained in jail uh, for the next four years from 1781 to 1785. And yet he kept printing the newspaper from within the jail cell. Uh, you might be asking how he did this. To be honest with you, I don't have any evidence how. I suspect he probably devised some sort of system with assistance from the outside to help print the newspaper. And Hickey continued to defend the freedom of the press in India. He continued to publish slogans like this one, Vox Populi, Vox Dei. It's Latin for the voice of the people is the voice of God. Hickey also continued to criticize the hypocrisy of some aspects of British rule in India, such as this particular article. Hickey writes, we committed a successful forgery on a native of Bengal and we gloried in it. Um, forgery at that time was a capital offense, which means you could be hung, hanged for forgery. So here we say, a native of Bengal, sorry, a native of the country who knew nothing of English laws hanged for a crime we triumphed from committing. Yet Clive was made a peer in England though he committed in Bengal the same crime for which we hung, hanged at Nandu Kumar. So he keeps saying that we, we celebrate Clive as Britishers. We celebrate Clive as a man who conquered India, as a man who was able to bring all this wealth from India to England, yet, it's he committed a crime, a forgery, that's the same crime that the British hung Nandi Kumar for. So he's pointing out sort of hypocrisy in, in the British legal system. Finally, in March, 1782, the Supreme Court seized Hickey's printing press, silencing the newspaper for good. This was the last paper printed on March 30th. What's the impact of Hickey's Bengal set? So the immediate impact is that actually Warren Hastings, as you might remember from your history lessons, was recalled to England to be impeached. And there are 22 charges of impeachment covering everything from um, soliciting bribes to wars of aggression. And many of these first abuses of power were first printed in Hickey's Bengal Gazette and in the press in India and Britain. 
So the publicity helped furnish parliamentary investigators, if not with evidence, then with support for the accusations. Sorry. There we are. Chief Justice Elijah Impey, remember he's one who accepted bribes from Hastings. He was also impeached. Uh, like Hastings, he was actually also acquitted ultimately. After leaving jail, Hickey attempted to restart his newspaper, but it was not a success. And in 1802, he died on a ship to Guangzhou, China. Um, his reasons for being on the ship are unknown, um, but I speculate that he had something to do with a trade between China and India at that point, which was, which was becoming more, um, more profitable. So for two short years, Hickey's Bengal was at worked to expose corruption and abuse of power, to speak truth to power, which is one of the most important aspects of journalism. So we should care for it for we should care for those reasons, but let me offer you some more reasons why I think the story is important and why you really should take uh, take a deep interest in the newspaper history in India. First, many Indians followed in Hickey's newspaper. You might remember from the very beginning of this presentation that I said that Europeans ran newspapers in India for the first 40 years, from 1780 to around 1818. So the first Indian-owned newspaper was called the Bengal Gazette. And I suspect that it was called the Bengal Gazette as a direct homage to Hickey's Bengal Gazette. Unfortunately, I don't think any copies of this newspaper or no collection survive. Now, the Bengal Gazette was founded by a man named Ganga Kishore Bhattacharya. And this is interesting because Ganga Kishore Bhattacharya worked with Paul Ferris. Paul Ferris, here's his name up top, was one of James Augustus Hickey's assistants. And when Hickey died, Paul Ferris bought a lot of Hickey's newspapers, a lot of the old collections that remained, and shared these, likely shared these with Ganga Kishore Bhattacharya. Paul Ferris was a direct business associate with Bhattacharya and with Hickey. So there's a direct transfer of knowledge from Hickey through Ferris to Bhattacharya about newspapers. And eventually this transfer of knowledge will lead to more modern newspapers. So you can see the tradition and heritage of journalism in India can stem from all the way back to the very beginning to, to uh, today. Let me give you a second reason why I think we should care about this. I mean, you might look around you and you might think um, there's so much social media in our lives now where you know we're always on our phones all the time. And the social media can be addictive, it can be divisive, um, but it can also be democratizing. Now think about that for a second. It can drive people apart but it also allows you to express your voice and your opinion where otherwise you might not have had a platform to do it before. You may recall, I mentioned Old Nell, the very beginning of this presentation. Old Nell, an Anglo-Indian woman, a poor woman, a greengrocer. She was able to express her opinion and her views and her life because of a newspaper, because of Hickey's Bengal set. And if she had not had Hickey's Bengal set, I may never have known about Old Nell, and I would never be able to tell you the story now. So in the 18th century, a newspaper is very similar to what we consider social media now. I'm not saying it's the same thing, but it's an idea where ideas, it's a place where ideas flourish, um, but all so, so, so does disinformation and division. So think about that. Think about the comparisons between what a newspaper represented and what social media represents now. And let me give you a, a couple last reasons. Um, you know, you, when you think about your freedom of speech, your freedom to, to express yourself in ways that the government can't censor, or at least should not censor, um, you know, where, does, where do those freedoms come from? Where, where do those norms and traditions and ideas come from a free speech and expression. Now, these come from your history. These come from 
people who came before and argued for them. And Hickey's Bengal Gazette is one of the places where this started in India. It was one of the first public platforms that would express an opinion that opposed government, that was critical of government, and had free ideas and free speech, or at least tried to. So think about that, that's one important reason. Let me give you a last reason um, to, to think, of, to care about the story and to learn about Hickey's Bengal was that. Um, through this newspaper, I showed you a very little glimpse, glimpse of how people in the past lived. You know, think about their lives and, and think how yours might not actually be that different, right? And it gives you a little insight into the people in the past and how they existed. So I wanna thank you for joining this talk. Uh, it's been my pleasure to, to tell you about Hickey's Bengal Gazette. I hope this gave you a bit of an introduction in the newspaper. And if you have any more questions, please don't hesitate to ask me or email me or call me. You can find my information easily online. And if you're really curious, I published a book about Hickey's Bengal Gazette, and I tell the whole dramatic and really interesting story. You can buy this from your local bookstore or online. So thank you very much again. Um, thank you to the organizers for having me here. It's been my pleasure. And again, feel free to reach out to me at any time. Thank you.